Customer or client segmentation is a problem many of us deal with. Today's use case is going to take a look at a nonprofit situation where you need to classify donors, but you have to classify them or segment them based on their history. So a donor who is the a brand new first time donor this year should be a new donor. A donor who's donated for multiple years should be a multiple year donor. And a donor who has donated multiple times in the past, but not this current year, should be considered a lapsed donor. Well, that definition's a bit harder than just writing a formula that maybe says if this, then that, because you're having to look back across a donor's history. How can we accomplish this kind of time-based customer or donor segmentation? Well, today's use case is going to solve that using an iterative macro. If you aren't familiar with macros, I highly recommend you attend live if you see this in time or watch the replay of our two-part macro series, which is going to go into in great detail what macros are and how you can use them and plus show you how to build a standard macro. In addition, you can always check out our on-demand courses, which will go much more in depth. There's also some great resources in the links below to get you introduced to the idea of macros if you'd like to learn more. But we're going to walk into an iterative macro. So what is an iterative macro in Alteryx? An iterative macro is one that allows you to take a process and loop it, changing something each iteration or loop until all of the records then are processed or you hit your maximum number of allowed iterations. So in this case, we're going to run our process once and we're going to label all donors with our current year, say 2020, as new donors and so on. Then we are going to remove the most current year of data and loop our data again. So now 2019 is going to be the current year and anybody who shows up for the first time in 2019 will be labeled a new donor for that year and we can repeat and so on. The reason we want to repeat this time-based classification is because we want to be able to compare new donors in 2020 to new donors in 2019 and 2018 and so on. Let's take a look at how this iterative macro works. Let's take a look at where we're trying to get to. We have this client sample transaction file. And in this case, we are looking at donors, but you could think about this as customers and you want to understand customers who are repeat versus new customers. So we have an ID for every one of our donors or customers. So we have an ID for our donors or our clients. We have a date that they either made a donation or made a purchase. And we can use that information to see their history over time. So here's a workflow where I have used the iterative macro that I've built in order to process this information so that what I get at the end is a classification of new donors for every single year, a classification of lapsed donors for every single year, and multi-year donors. So this allows me to track over time what's happening in these different segments of my clients or customers or donors. So how was I able to develop this? Well, a macro is a packaged piece of a workflow that you can embed in a parent workflow. So we can actually open this macro up if we right click and select open macro. We can see the underlying workflow that is part of that macro. Now, an iterative macro, as we said before, doesn't just process data once but it will actually loop data back through that process until a condition is met for every record or until a maximum number of iterations is hit. So in this case, we wanted to run this process once and see, all right, for if we create 2020 as our current year, we then want to see how many donors donated for the first time in that current year, donated in prior years, or any time in the past and whether or not they lapsed and did not donate this year, but had donated in the past. And that allowed us to categorize those different donor types. So we can see how I was able to accomplish just that first definition um, by figuring out what the current year was, right? The What's the most recent year in my data set? That's my current year. So by taking the maximum of the year field in my data set, 
I can then figure out, okay, in this current data set, the most recent year is 2020. Then I can create this standard formula that says, take the current year on that record and subtract it from the maximum year in the data set. And so current year would be zero, the previous year would be minus one, minus two, and so on. Then once I have that standardization for any years in my data set, I pivot my data using the cross tab tool so that I can see for each constituent, whether they donated in the current year, that year zero, the previous year, or any other uh, prior year. Then after that, right, I am able to transpose that data in order to see how many total years a donor has donated as part of my definition. So I group by that constituent ID and I can count how many non-nulls exist for that constituent or donor or customer. At the number of non-nulls, since we have um, pivoted our data here, right, if these are all null, the only non-null I have is one, so this donor donated once out of the entire number of years that I have. I can join that information back to my data set, and I now have a field that has the total number of donation years or transaction years, right, years that a customer bought something from us for this entire data set. This branch up here does a similar thing, but looking at total donation amount. So this is just summing the total donation amount for previous years if they donated um, three years back or more. And we can join that information back to say here's the total donations in the past for previous three years, and this is the total number of years that they've donated, amount versus times. The real meat happens here where we are calculating the classification or that segmentation based on history. So we can say if it's not null the current year, right, if they had a donation in the current year and the total donation years only equals one, we know that then they're a new donor, right? They've only donated once and that do one donation was in the current year. That makes them a new donor. If it is empty in that current year, meaning they did not donate this year, then they are a lapsed donor. If the current year is it null and the total donation years is greater than one, right, or doesn't equal one, then they're going to be a multi-year donor. So that those are general classifications. Obviously, you could make these classifications much more specific based on your segmentation needs. So now we've classified these donors for our 2020 data set and everything before. So one of our outputs from this is going to be that complete classification. So here we have an output, and it's going to read out all of the constituents, the year of the data set that this is, um, and all of our subsequent information about those donors, and the label or segmentation of that donor. So that is one output of our macro. But the second thing that's going to happen with this macro is that we are going to join this processing back to our original data so that we have the original data set that's coming through here for any records that were processed. And we are going to filter out any record that belongs to the most recent year present in the data set. So if the year on a record or constituent IDs donation equals the maximum year in the entire data set, those records are going to be removed. And then we send all of the remaining data set here into another macro output. Now, let's understand what's happening with these macro outputs here. You see these don't look like typical outputs, and that's because they're not writing to a file. They're what's called a macro output because they can write back into our workflow. So we see that our macro, right, this little bl blue dot represents this whole workflow. This blue dot contains the workflow we've just been looking at. And so data are coming in, and the data that come in come in through this macro input and they flow through this workflow. Then when they are done, they're gonna go out two places. They're gonna go out our first macro output, which is going to be this macro output. And that is our processed data with all of our segmentation labels. This second output is not going to immediately come into our workflow. Instead, what is gonna happen is this output is going to send data back around and into here and that creates our loop. So we label and assign this output 
to be our iterative output that's going to send data back in here. When this data comes back around, the most recent year has been removed. So in this case, 2020 has been removed. So the most recent year is now going to be 2019. And we are going to repeat that same process, except 2019 is going to be considered the current year. And we're going to reclassify any present donors. So if 2019 was the first year that they donated, they're going to be labeled a new donor. And that is what allows us to create that year over year comparison of a time based segmentation definition. So in addition to building this functional workflow, the two key things you need to do here is once you've created the workflow and you've established that loop, you've established how you're going to be able to send this data back in and have it be a little bit different every time using this filter. You then have to go into View Interface Designers, Properties, and you have to indicate which is your iteration input, which in this case we only have one input so that's easy, but which is the iteration output. In other words, which iteration sends data back into our workflow because it's the solution and which input is going to send things back in, which output is going to send those back into the loop so they can process again. And we select that from this drop down menu. So we can see that this first one is the finished. So we don't want to select that one. We would select our iterative output, which is what I've labeled this output here. Another really important step here to make this useful anywhere is that in our input, we can actually configure this to show a field map. So here we need three key fields in order for this iterative macro to work. We need an ID, we need a gift amount or a sales amount, and we need the date that that transaction happened. And any data set that comes in could have these fields named anything you want. You would just choose which field is the correct one from the drop down menu and map that in the iterative macro. So this was a very fast introduction to iterative macros. We have not gone very in depth in it, but this is an idea of a really great example of iterative macros, especially because iterative macros are a little bit more rare. We don't see them as often. So we wanted to share this use case with you so you could see how powerful iterative macros can be and when you would really want to use one. If you'd like to learn more about macros, please do check out the resources in the links below in the description. I hope that you found this helpful and as always drop us a line if there's a kind of use case you would like to see.